Hi there, this is Christina Simmons with Say Yes to Holiness podcast, and I am so delighted that I was finally able to connect with my good friend, Chris Trammell, and uh, he was one of the panelists on the Say Yes to Holiness Transformation Online Summit, and both of us have been super busy. I've been sick for part of the time. He wasn't, praise God, uh, but I just wanted to uh, you know, share some of his wisdom, especially some of the work that he's now doing. So, uh, Chris, go ahead and tell people a little bit about yourself and uh, and a little bit about where you are right now. And then we'll kind of jump in to the exciting opportunities that you're doing right now. Christina, thank you. It is a pleasure to engage with you again from Alabama to California, Long Beach, where I'm currently at. Uh, it is fantastic. Thanks so much. And yes, Praise God that uh, the divine healer has kept me and my family healthy and safe. And praise God that you had the hands of the divine healer move you through your experience with COVID as well. So, you know, amen, 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 both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> you know, yeah. as we as we talk about this global pandemic, and for those of you listening to this podcast, Christina and I totally nerded out for about twenty minutes about the science. <laughs> because I was a science teacher at the Los Angeles Zoo for 15 years. And inside of understanding uh, the experience that people are having of the pandemic, when we first met and we did the Say Yes to Holiness Transformation Summit, I was working with churches, helping them move as quickly as they could, the sacred spaces, the yoga studios, the leaders that were bringing forward health and wellness, as an organization. And what I saw was that as much as they were giving to the organization, who was giving to them? Who was nurturing mm -hmm. them? Who was giving them permission to consider, well, if my organization isn't doing well, what's going to happen to me? And that's mm -hmm. where I saw, oh, there's going to be a need for a pivot for many individuals as this pandemic continues to go on. Some people have still done well with tithing and offerings in the church. Others have a temporary plug with the PPE loans and the disaster loans. Mm -hmm. But I do see that there's going to be career fluctuations with a number of clergy pastors. The bivocational pastor and minister is really going to have to look at, okay, how do I supplement my income? Because I gave my word, I gave my life to making a difference in my community, but my organization can't afford me quite the same way anymore. So what do they have to do? So that's where I stopped and Spirit said, hey, Chris, why don't you uh, try Pastor 2.0? And I said, hey, I got an idea. Let's, let's do Pastor 2.0, what it takes to bring your gifts successfully online. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is launching this Monday, and we are going to do a free five-day masterclass workshop where we are going to guide all of the members, all the attendees, on what does it take to take your gift online, to start to establish your message, what it looks like to give yourself permission to create and explore what is your gift, and then to also look at what is the mindset and the leadership that's required, what then is also going to be the structures and then leading them to the strategies and the systems that will allow them to scale and to grow. And uh, we are super excited and I cannot thank you enough because it's hard to talk through a big smile if people can't see that on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, I'm, I'm super excited to hear about this because actually that's something that I encounter myself. Uh, so, you know, I just had my book come out, you know, Say Yes. And the focus of Say Yes is, you know, helping individuals be able to actualize, you know, to reaffirm the fun foundational truths, then for them to get mm -hmm. their house in order, become start to become right ordered so that then they can experience that life of abundance God created us for. Um, yes. And it's not all platitudes, rather it's there's active hard work that has to be done, but that individual work, you know, especially within, you know, Catholic world, it's not just the individual, it's also about the community. And yeah. so therefore it's 
when one person becomes more of who they're supposed to be, yes. then the community benefits. And yes. I deal with a lot of um, leaders as well. And that's part of why I was so excited to hear about what you're doing is because it is so needed. Uh, so many people are like, well, I've got, you know, my, my stuff together and I would love to see other people. And you can kind of teach that, you know, um, but it's like, gosh, our, our, our organization, we're just not communicating We're you know, we've got problems, this and that. And, you know, it's like, how do we get everybody kind of on the same page? And yes, that's, that's the, you know, that's something that, but the leader has to have the vision and mm -hmm. they have to be doing what it is that they're asking their people to do. And yes. if you're telling your, you know, your folk, Hey, you need to be taking care of yourself. You need to be praying. You need to be, you know, whatever it is, then you need to be modeling that. And if you're not getting help, if you're not getting that coaching, that accompaniment, that support, it, it's not going to happen because you're relying on yourself <laughs> rather than on, on the communal effort and also the gifts that, that God is placing in your life to do that. So, um, I'm excited about Chris, how you guys are really responding. I don't know how you did that. You just read, you just spoke the last paragraph of day three, where I say an online leader cultivates these practices for themselves and their audience. If the leader can't demonstrate the practice and the results of these practices, you can't expect your audience to do it either. Mm -hmm. Right? It yep. is part of being a leader is that, what do I need to do to lead from the front? And these are scary times. I completely really do get, and I, uh, just the compassion and the empathy for our leaders right now, um, because there's a thin line. What I'm experiencing is sitting on so many different reopening task uh, forces mm -hmm. and listening. I'm in, again, I'm in California where our state has, did what we thought was a very good job at the initial action back of March 18th. Go figure that's almost five months ago, right? Yeah. Of, of shutting down the state and then the trickling out of how do we start to reopen? Uh, so I've sat on those task force and listen, but what I've seen in so many pastors and so many task forces, the paralysis by analysis. And mm -hmm. I, I don't see how someone could afford to still pay their bills if they aren't part of a type of denomination where this pastor or the minister or the clergy have a guaranteed salary. But if you're part of one of the other groups where it does depend on the tithing and the offerings and those fluctuations are going up and down, then it requires you, pastor listening to this, minister listening to this at this time, to really start to consider what do I need to do for myself because I need to pay the bills. Um, our senior pastors are a little bit better off because they have maybe supplemental income that's coming in from retirement, social security, mm -hmm. but our young pastors who were committed when they came out, have families, have children, and they are looking at what do I do? Do I stay within my ministry? Do I stay with my commitment to share the light of Christ? And how do I do that if I need to take up a second job? So that's where we come forward and say, before you jump to something that isn't aligned with what you were committed to doing, who you said you wanted to be in this world, come whatever circumstances are, are going to come your way, such as a pandemic, <laughs> let's help you, right? Like, let's explore for five days what it would look like to take your gift online. Mm -hmm. And to really have that be what you're known for, you know, in the world of branding, right? What's your message? How are people going to know you? And supporting them with everything that I've learned over time. I've worked for Nike. I've worked for Under Armour. Uh, those of you listening, I was a track and field coach for many years. So <laughs> I'm just a sports guy. My son plays football at the University of Utah. That's a whole other topic about how football is even going to oh, wow. happen, right? Yeah. Yep. So um, I've brought everything that I have learned in that corporate world and said, okay, you little guy, David, how can I give you the tool that you need to stand a fighting chance right now to mm -hmm. 
to continue to move forward and then to go beyond that and be successful so that you can stay where you said you wanted to be at to make the difference that you wanted to make. And um, we're, we are excited. We're thrilled. Um, yeah, it, it, it's going to be great. Ask me something else. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of folk, uh, you know, in my audience, you know, are Catholic uh, involved in ministry themselves, and they might be going, well, shoot, you know, Christina, it, this sounds great. Chris is doing this, you know, for, you know, all those Protestants, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> but, the, but, the, but the reality is, is that this is a, an issue that is fundamental within the Catholic Church for those who work within church. Anyone who's involved in ministry they struggle, especially like youth ministry, young adult ministry, mm -hmm. kind of the, you know, oh, you know, we can get rid of them, you know, kind of thing, uh, yeah. you know, when times get tough. And it's something where we have to understand that our vocation, our personal mission that God has created us for isn't necessarily the job. America right. likes to tell us that, you know, our, yeah. our Western world likes to say it's who, you know, it's what you do, not yes. who you are. Um, but the fact is, is that to get a ministry coach, to get someone who's able to help you be able to see your gifts of how it is that you can be doing your ministry in the midst of your commitment to whatever it is you're doing, that's, that's right. huge. We all need that coaching and we have to, you know, if we don't have it in our situation right now, if we don't yes. have a pastor or another ministry leader who we're able to turn to, you need to go seek it out. And that's a part of why I was so excited to hear about what Chris is doing, because it crosses over all denominations, yes. you know? And in fact, you, you were telling me before, you know, uh, just all the different types of churches, you know, that you work with, you know? So, right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so it, it, it's something where we have to understand that as leaders, there's more that unifies us than divides us. Um, and, you know, the practical circumstances many times drive us to do the things that we need to do or should have been doing, but we were too afraid to do yes. because yes. we didn't want to upset the apple cart, but the apple cart got upset. So, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you hit the nail on the head. I cannot tell you um, how many times I invited different church leaders and sacred space leaders to move online before the pandemic hit. And the mm -hmm. slow, very kind, very polite, oh, we'll look at that. We're doing fine just now. And mm -hmm. if that was ever you, pastor, minister, audience <laughs> member listening, <laughs> you're forgiven. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the tough love is now you're behind, right? For those that were already in position, they just kept accelerating and moving forward. Uh, my analogy has been this, that when the pandemic hit in March, I could not buy a microphone from Best Buy to <laughs> save my life. They were back order because everybody was moving online, right? So mm -hmm. now everybody moves online. And they're like, we're online. Well, yeah, but there's so much more now at this point in time. If you look at it, and here's my sports coach. Again, I was a track and field coach as well for 17 years, and it's what gives me a lot of my organizational uh, scope when I work with programs and, and corporations, is you now got one very strong player on your team. If you think of it like football, great, you went online, you got a quarterback but now you have to place all the other players around that quarterback. Cause now just having the, an important position does no long, it no longer satisfies what it takes to win. And that's mm -hmm. where I see people said, well, we're online now. And now what, what's your mm -hmm. playbook? Who do you need to recruit? Who do you need to bring on the team? Who's your play caller? Who's the coach of all of this? And mm -hmm. that is where we step in and say, okay, look, let's help you. Let's give you a strategy. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and give you the structures and the systems. I can't tell you, Christina, how many churches didn't even have a good email marketing system, right? Oh, and oh, don't, don't, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, bless their hearts because 
it wasn't needed more than just here's our outbound newsletter. Mm -hmm. Here's our, and we had our, our church office volunteer or paid staff member just adding names as we went. But now mm -hmm. the robustness, robustness of our times calls for something more powerful to you. So what we did is we said, okay, church organization, we will 100% lock arms with you if you need us. But it's the individual right now that we know is having to look at for themselves. What do we have to do to be more effective online for myself? What am I going to do if my organization doesn't go well? And for those that naturally had a gift that they've kept on the shelf and they've started playing with it during the times of the, of the pandemic, I already have two outlines of a book that I've written during the course of the pandemic. You've went ahead and launched yourself. Uh, a book as well. So for those of us that had the infrastructure, I'm cautious to say this, we have been okay in many ways. Uh, I know many well, people haven't been, you know. Yeah, no, and, and, and I totally agree with that. And, and a lot of it really comes down to mindset. Um, it comes down to, you know, and especially in a faith-based world, one mm -hmm. of the, and, and this was even before the pandemic happened, but it was something where it's just like, if you truly believe and you've spent time in prayer and discernment and you believe that this is where you need to go, go do it. Yeah. Why aren't you? Step yes. out in faith. And so that's where it's just like, you need to spend that time and you need to say, all right, Lord, you've given me circumstances where I, I joke and tell people that being a leader right now is actually the best time to be a leader ever. And they look at me like I have three heads. And I said, <laughs> you don't, do you realize that no one expects you to have all the answers or to Bravo. have a plan that's never going to exactly. change? And it's Bravo. like, anytime be before now, that was exactly what was expected. If you're the leader, yes. you better tell me, okay, I need to be here. I need to have this many, yes. you know, screws in my hand to, you know, what, whatever, you know? And it's like, and you better have it all laid out. Otherwise, you know, you're not being a good leader. Now you can go, hey, how many of you want to do some sort of Bible study? People yes. kind of indicate, hey, yeah, we'd be interested. It's like, okay, so do you want to do it on Zoom? Do you feel comfortable getting together in kind of a big room and we do social distance, you know, and, and you just figure it out as you go. Yes. You never yes. could get away with that before. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. That is so accurate. And um, you could throw spaghetti at the wall right now and no one's going to fault you for it because nobody knows who's driving this ship the best, right? So if you could just get ahead and make a little bit better spaghetti than the next, you're in the game. Mm -hmm. It's the ones who aren't taking action after the first spaghetti throw that I'm mm -hmm. looking for. To, and you talked about mindset and that's our third day on Wednesday, our session three, we talk about leadership and mindset and what that takes because it does take something to grant yourself permission to say in the midst of all of this, as I am the shepherd of my group, of my flock, my sheep, how does the shepherd permit himself to think about the shepherd again, mm -hmm. right? What gives ourselves, and it's one of the most generous acts that we could give for our own self-awareness, for our own inspiration, is to give ourselves permission to sit with a piece of paper and start to write down what is possible if I just tried something different right now. And that's what we do. We give five days of granting permission for the possibility of gifts to be brought forward and to say, okay, great. Let us now build, you know, I use a NASCAR analogy. If you take off the body of all of these beautiful racing vehicles that we see racing on Sundays, they're all frames and engines, right? Mm -hmm. They're all frames and engines. It's not until we put the skin on it, the brand, the message on it, that all of a sudden we're rooting for our team, our driver. So what we do is we, well, we have two, and I just want to make sure it's clear, we have two opportunities. The primary opportunity is we're going to show you like the old, 
many of your listeners will remember the old Chilton's guide where you brought out your own mechanics book and it showed you how to do something and take an engine apart. I was a total grease monkey in high school and I used plenty of those guides. But then we also realize there's those that want it done for you. They're like, mm -hmm. just set it up for me, build my car, have it ready to go right off the showroom floor so I could just get in it and drive. And mm -hmm. we create that pit crew and that team as well. So yes, yeah. if there's a time to be in the race, it's now. And if you are still wondering, what do I need to do to get in the race? Get in the race and we'll help mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's beautiful to hear um, because so many people hesitate because of, you know, they don't know what to do or how to do it, you know, but I often tell people that if your why is big enough, then you'll be driven to go and do and figure it out. And when, but when you have help to do it, when you have someone to accompany you and to mm -hmm. show you and to teach you, then it just makes it so much easier. But yes. I often tell people, you know, especially when we're in ministry, if our why isn't all about trying to do everything for the greater glory of God and to do Amen. the best that we can, then, you know, why are you in ministry? Uh, you know, right. so we kind of have to do a gut check there of where if I'm so paralyzed to go and do what it is that up until this point, this, I know this is where God wants me. Yes. Why do you think he, he, do you think he changed his mind? I don't think so. So it, it's really a matter of us going, okay, so you blew a storm. My sail is ripped. I got to, you know, fix my sail and I got to re, you know, re, fix my rudder and I, I need to, you know, to head off again. And that, you know, how, how many, you know, new countries, you know, right. were, were discovered because of a storm. Right. Where it's huh? like, oh, hey, we're, <laughs> where's this? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, Absolutely. But, uh, Absolutely. But, but, but that is so awesome, uh, the work that you're doing. I'm so excited. Um, please, please give everybody, you know, uh, one more time, you know, where they can find out about this workshop, you know, want to come and participate. Where can they go sign up? You know, all of those details. Beautiful. Thank you for asking that. So first and foremost, if the uh, workshop again is called Pastor 2.0. And again, it's a, the complete play on what is your 2.0. So many of us have been in this one stage of career. The hybrid pastor, the hybrid minister is here. He is not going away. And that's part of the 2.0 iteration is not only is it a skill set that you need now, if you're going to stay where you're at, but it's also going to increase your value as a young pastor, which most young pastors know, they grew up online, but the middle age pastor, the 20 years in that's uncertain, we want to give them the tools as well. So what does that 2.0 look for you, look like for you? And maybe it's moving out of ministry to create your own, as you described a few minutes ago. What's your mm -hmm. gift to do your own? So www.pastor20.com is how the internet receives Pastor 2.0. Don't put a dot in between the two and the zero because um, some <laughs> browsers understand what you're trying to go for. So we also shortened it up and you could just go www.pastor2.com. Made it very easy for people to just go www.pastor2.com and that will take you to our registration page. From the registration page, it's going to walk you through and then bring you to our closed private Facebook community where you're going to have the opportunity to be with other like-minded colleagues who are looking at what does my gift look like? What can it do for me in revenue? What can it do for me in fulfillment? What can it do for me to shine my light, the light of Christ through me as me so that others are free to share their lights as well? And that's really what we're out to do is continue to brighten lights, even though our, our world may tell us it's a, overall a dark time. It is a challenging time. And for those of us that have the tools, the resources, and the ability to continue to shine our light in the, the storms of peace be still and calm the waters, I invite you to 
Calm the Waters and join us for five days so that we could give you our best and have you explore what does it look like to take your gift online and what could it do for you financially, you know? And if you really did it right, so many of you see that the online world has been very generous to those that have mastered the systems and the back end and the understanding. And I know many of you are like, I can't do that. We'll guide you. We will guide you there. We will show you how. And for those of you who just don't want to put your toes in the water at all, we could even set that up for you. So yes, I really appreciate it. I, I can't thank you enough because when we first spoke uh, for the uh, Say Yes to Holiness Transformation Summit, I was inviting pastors to look at what is their word? Who are they going to be when the pandemic hit? right? Like mm -hmm. it was the word to manage. And now I see that in giving their word, they haven't given it to themselves. They haven't given permission to themselves to explore, okay, now what's next on the other side of this pandemic? And that's where we want to help them get ahead of. That's, that's awesome. Um, so just uh, one more practical detail so they can get registered. Uh, for times, because a lot mm -hmm. of people might not be able to, you know, spend, you know, five days, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so what, what's the actual format that this is going to look like and will it be available uh, for recording? So like if they can't, you know, they got another commitment, they'll be yes. able to. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Christina. I love talking to other veterans. Um, <laughs> 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Every day, we're just going to keep it consistent. 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the Facebook group. So if you go to pastor2.com, it'll register you. We will send you the link for that Facebook group. Now we know that we're working across a three hour time zone in our, in our big country from Atlantic to Pacific. We will have replays available for you as well. We will also make sure that we have different team members going on into the group at different times. So if you have questions, you have comments, you have an inspired moment where you're looking to tell somebody, I'm afraid to say this, but I need to say this. It's got to come out of me. We'll be there to receive it. So 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are the main days of the workshop. We're going to do questions and answers on Saturday, the same thing where we're going to bring on some of our other consultants from our team. That will be 11 a.m. On Sunday, I want our pastors and our ministers to go do what they're great at. So please, you could go do what you do on Sunday. We'll be back again the following Monday or Tuesday as needed to um, answer any other further questions as well. Uh, that, that sounds awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Chris. Um, you know, I, I'm really excited for those of you um, who might be uh, listening. Um, you know, I really encourage you to go and check it out uh, for no other reason than to give yourself that opportunity to be able to dream of what your 2.0 might look like. And, yeah. um, you know, and th this is for, you know, any leader out there, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you're in ministry or not, you That's have right. got to commit to doing this consistently for yourself. Um, you know, as Chris alluded, you know, both of us, you know, uh, my book came out, um, you know, in the last, uh, last, uh, shoot, in the last month. Um, and uh, in fact, I just got all my author copies in. I now have to Yay! send out my pre-orders. Yay! Yay. Um, but the fact is, is that um, had to stop and redream, you know, it's just like, yes. okay, you know, what, what, what's next? Uh, what yes. is it that, you know, our Lord's calling us to? And so, um, take yeah. the time. I really uh, strongly encourage you to do that. And, and I can so, so recommend uh, Chris and his team. Uh, they're, oh, they're a great thank group you, of people. Christina. Thank so. you. And, and, you know, I do, I do know that in calling it Pastor 2.0, because I've worked so closely with churches, it's what felt right. But if you are committed to the goodness of your community and you are committed to loving, all affirming, just, you're a health and wellness coach, you're a social entrepreneur, you're somebody who has a gift to give and you know having a coach, a guide, a Sherpa, someone to make those crooked paths straight and to be the lamp to your feet, please join us, pastor2.com. Awesome. That's where we'll be to get you started. Yeah. Awesome. 
Well, I, I appreciate your time, Chris. It's always a joy to, to talk with you. And uh, just as a reminder for those of you uh, who um, are normally listening to the Say Yes to Holiness podcast, uh, you can get my book on Amazon in all formats, uh, but uh, you know it, it's something where I'm excited about that. Uh, easiest way to find it on Amazon is uh, type in Say Yes and then put in my last name, uh, in Simmons, S-E-M-M-E-N-S. Uh, but you can also find me at sayyestoholiness.com and uh, check out my YouTube uh, channel as well, the Say Yes to Holiness YouTube uh, channel. Uh, only need, uh, I think it's uh, 950 more subscribers and I can go live on YouTube as well. Uh, <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> well, no, you, you need a thousand. So I only have 50. So that, well, that's why I, I, I do. You'll get but, there. Yeah. You'll oh, yeah. There. Little bit by little bit. So. Um, but I look forward to the, to the journey. Know that uh, of, of my prayers for you and, and Chris mm -hmm. and all of your endeavors, but then also for all of my listeners, that we are able to continue to do whatever it takes so that we can tell the master of death, not today, as we pursue holiness. So yeah. thanks everybody for joining me, and I look forward to talking with all of you again soon. Peace be well. Thank you.